G'day all you frothers and welcome to this video review of the 2022 Canyon Lux Trail. My name's Will and this is the newest mountain bike from Canyon, though strictly speaking the Lux Trail isn't actually a whole new bike and that's because it employs the same back end as the regular Lux. The front end is all new however and it is significantly longer and slacker than its racier counterpart. Along with an increase in suspension travel and some burlier components, the Lux Trail forges its own path that promises greater versatility and more fun. But is this just a half-assed approach to add another model to the range? Or a clever way to build a new bike out of an existing and well-proven platform? Well, I've been testing this bike for the past few weeks to find out. The Lux is Canyon's lightweight full suspension XC bike and the Lux Trail that we have here uses a similar looking carbon fiber frame. However, it does have more suspension travel with 120 mm fork on the front and 110 mm out back. It's designed to offer more capability than a traditional XC race bike and that puts this into similar territory as the Specialized Epic Evo, the Merida 96 8000, the Trek Top Fuel and the Orbea Oise TR. Along with the increase in suspension travel, the Lux trail gets a whole new front triangle. Compared to the regular Lux, the head angle is 2 degrees slacker at 67.5 degrees and the reach is around 25 to 30 millimetres longer. On the medium size I've been testing here, it gets a 460 millimetre reach which is huge for an XC bike. The swing arm and linkage are directly imported from the regular Lux with a slightly longer shock stroke providing the 10 millimetre increase in rear travel. We have the same rear centre length of 435 millimetres and the same effective seat tube angle of 74.5 degrees. The bottom bracket does sit a fraction lower at 38 millimeters below the hub axle line. Now there are four models in the Canyon Lux Trail range and all of them use the same full carbon fiber frame. Kicking off the range we have the Lux Trail CF6 which sells for 5,049 Australian dollars. Then we have the Lux Trail CF7 which sells for 6,549 dollars. The Lux Trail CF8, which sells for $8,049, and this bike right here, the Lux Trail CF9, which retails for $8,799 Australian dollars. Now it's worth bearing in mind that you'll need to add on the necessary shipping fee to all of those prices. Here in Australia, that's $199. Even still, this bike is remarkable value, at least on paper anyway. We've got Fox Factory suspension with a 34 step cast fork and a float DPS shock. There's a lightweight transfer SL dropper post, a Shimano XTR drivetrain with race face next SL carbon cranks, there's Shimano XTR race brakes and a DT Swiss XRC 1200 carbon wheel set. Those are wrapped with Schwalb tires with a 2.4 inch wicked wheel up front and a 2.35 inch racing Ralph on the rear. Confirmed weight for our test bike weighed without pedals and set up tubeless is just 11.22 kilos. Now at 175 centimeters tall, as per usual, I've been riding a medium size in the Canyon Lux Trail. However, for the first time ever testing a Canyon, on my first ride, I thought this bike may actually be too big. That 460 millimeter reach is huge and combined with a 60 millimeter stem and 760 millimeter wide riser bars, the cockpit is very small. Spacious. Now I'm not a big fan of the stock Salitalia saddle so I did swap that for one of my favorites an Ergon SM Pro which is more comfortable but it also has longer rails and that actually allowed me to shift the saddle a little bit further forwards. Once in position the effective seat tube angle actually measured closer to 76 degrees. I also tried a shorter 45 millimeter stem partway through testing which I ended up preferring. It was both more comfortable and it helped to quicken up the front end steering a little too. Another note on geometry the 465 millimeter seat tube length is quite long however 
This is an XC bike with 100 mil travel dropper post and I've not had any issues with the fit there. That said, for anyone who is on the border between two frame sizes could do well to look at the seat tube length, the reach and the effective top tube measurement because the Lux Trail is a significantly bigger bike than from what we've seen from Canyon's XC and Trail bikes in the past. Canyon recommends setting up the rear shock on the Lux Trail with 25% sag for a firmer and racier feel, or up to 30% sag for a smoother and more forgiving ride. Because that long shock creates such a low leverage ratio, operating pressures are also quite low. For my 68 kilo riding weight, I needed just 105 PSI inside the shock, which got me to around 27 to 28% sag. Now I have been able to use full travel on the rear, though bottom out has never been harsh or particularly frequent. And that's good news because Fox doesn't recommend fitting any volume spaces inside this particular size shock. That means if you are bottoming out regularly, you'll simply need to add air pressure to increase support. Now this was our first experience with the new 34 step car fork and I can tell you it's been a thoroughly positive one. I set up this fork as per the recommended settings and they proved to be spot on. As for the tyres, these feature Schwalbe's lightweight super race casings. Now they are very supple but they're also quite thin the 720 gram Racing Ralph on the back being particularly dainty. With that in mind, I fitted a tire invader insert into the rear wheel to provide a little more rim and tire protection. And I set pressures at 20 to 22 PSI on the front and 23 to 25 PSI on the rear. Well, let's start out with what the Canyon Lux Trail does well. Initially, I didn't know what to expect because that radically longer front end and the increased travel suggest that it could be closer to a cushy trail bike. But it was clear from the very first pedal stroke on the Lux Trail that this is still very much an XC bike and it's still very much a Lux. Coming in a little over 11 kilos, the Lux Trail is lightweight, fast and responsive. It's got an incredibly efficient suspension design with those carbon flex stays adding notable support throughout the travel. Along with the inherent anti-squat, the Lux Trail possesses excellent organic pedal efficiency even with the shock set wide open. There's a powerful surge forward under pedaling inputs which is complemented by the lightweight and stiff carbon wheels. Only the knobbly tread pattern of the Wicked Wheel tempers the Lux Trail's urgency, though with a faster rolling tyre up front, this bike is totally raceable out of the box. Things do get interesting with that longer front centre, which significantly boosts overall stability. The wheelbase is nearly 50 millimetres longer than the regular Lux, giving this bike a much bigger footprint on the trail. The front wheel sticks way further out ahead of you, and that provides a more confidence-inspiring riding position on steeper descents. The wide bars also improve stability and control over the front wheel and there is excellent cornering bite and all-round traction from that front tyre. That's complemented by the supple and lively Fox 34 step cast fork which helps to maximise grip on rough sections of trail. Along with the 44mm offset and the 67.5 degree head angle, the steering is very steady and predictable for such a lightweight XC bike. It's not as razor sharp as the regular Lux and initially I was finding myself understeering on flat turns. Indeed, cornering on spaghetti single track does require a little more premeditation. Rather than turning the bars, the Lux Trail responds better to dropping the saddle out of the way and reefing it over through sharper bends. The shorter 45mm stem really helped in this regard, and so do those wide bars. Overall, it is still quite a sporty bike, and thanks to the short back end and responsive pedalling performance, it really encourages and rewards an attacking riding style. As for the downsides of the Canyon Lux Trail, well, I wouldn't exactly describe the rear suspension as being buttery plush. It's very similar to the regular Lux, and it's definitely not as cushy as Canyon's 130mm travel Neuron trail bike. Indeed, some small bump sensitivity has been sacrificed in favour of the Lux Trail snappy pedalling performance, and there is more surface feedback here compared to plusher multi-link bikes like the Pivot Trail 429 and the Santa Cruz Tallboy. The firm suspension can also see the rear tyre struggling for traction on looser and steeper climbs. The climbing position itself is good. The wallow free suspension ensures that the dynamic seat tube angle is very stable and consistent. 
but if the climb is particularly chunky, you will find yourself getting knocked around a bit more if you try to sit down and spin a lower gear. I found that when facing uphill rock garden puzzles, the best plan of attack with the Lux Trail was to shift into a higher gear, get out of the saddle and use brute force to muscle your way up and over those trickier sections. It has also taken some time to recalibrate to the two position dropper post. The Fox Transfer SL is either fully extended or fully compressed with no position in between. Position, it's either up or down. So in the middle. Doesn't lock. No, exactly. Initially, I didn't think this would be an issue, but I did find myself wishing for an in-between position on more technical climbs. It has impressed with its low weight and its effortless action, but it didn't take long for it to develop an excessive amount of rotational play. It's also started sticking slightly just before it reaches full extension, and that means if you do go to sit back down on the saddle, it can crunch all the way through the travel, which is a bit unnerving. I'll be sending it off to Fox shortly to get repaired under warranty, but it is disappointing that in 2021, we're still experiencing durability issues with dropper posts, especially one that costs 600 bucks. With the front end inspiring plenty of confidence, this bike encourages you to charge hard and fast on the descents. The rougher the descent, however, the more challenging it can be for the back end to keep up. In loose conditions, the Racing Ralph does break traction much sooner than the front. Well, this can be hilarious fun on smoother single track where the slide is both predictable and useful for squaring off sharper corners. On choppier single track though, the lightweight rear tire will make you second guess both your entry speed and your line choice. The back end can also get a bit squirrely under duress, especially when it's being smashed into repeated hits at speed. This is a combination of the rebound characteristic of those carbon flex stays and general swing arm flex under more violent impacts. Mind you, we are talking about riding some pretty hectic trails here, where the Lux Trail's puffed up chest means that you can occasionally end up biting off more than you can chew. The suspension itself is otherwise really well managed. Once you push past that sag point, the mid-stroke support is absolutely superb. There's no wallow and it doesn't blow through its travel, so although there is only 110 mil of rear travel, it is really efficiently managed. Otherwise, the rest of the bike has performed admirably. The DT Swiss wheels are very light at just 1,563 grams. They're also very responsive with minimal flex. That said, combined with the 35 millimeter diameter carbon handlebars, the front end is quite stiff and unrelenting on high speed chatter. Personally, I prefer to see a 31.8 millimeter diameter bar to provide a little more compliance up front. The cockpit is quite messy with that dual remote lockout and given how efficient this bike is, I'm tempted to ditch the remote lockout just to tidy things up a bit. That said, the remote system is totally functional and it means you can get away with that softer 30% sag setting while still having access to a firmer compression mode to stabilize the shock on the climbs. The XTR race brakes have been fantastic. They've worked beautifully despite being paired to off-brand haze rotors. Heavier riders may wish for more power though, so it's worth noting you can fit a 180 mm rotor on the rear for more bite. The IPU steering limiter is entirely unnoticed when riding, but it is useful for protecting the top tube from the handlebar controls in the event of a crash. The chain guide is similarly discreet yet practical. The tool-free Quixel is super handy for rear wheel removal, and I love being able to carry two 750ml water bottles for longer trail rides. Now you might be wondering how the Canyon Lux Trail compares to some of the competition. There are two bikes in particular that we've spent a lot of time on that compete directly with the Lux Trail, that being the Specialized Epic Evo and the Merida 96 8000. I've put a detailed comparison between these three bikes in the full review over at flowmountainbike.com. Make sure you click the link in the video description below to check out the full review and see how the Lux Trail stacks up against the competition. And that, my friends, brings us to the verdict of the 2020 22 Canyon Lux Trail. Well, the new Lux Trail is quite an adventurous move for Canyon. It's taken what is otherwise a conservative bike and has successfully augmented it with a radically longer and slacker front end, delivering a welcome boost in high speed stability. Cleverly though, the choice to import the back end from the regular Lux means that Canyon's engineers have been able to keep the overall costs down. The result is a gorgeous but well-priced bike that is brimming with lots of neat details and a highly appealing 
build kit that offers impressive bang for buck. The rear suspension is on the firmer side. It places a stronger emphasis on stability and organic pedal efficiency. As a result, it doesn't exactly ooze small bump compliance and it's not as comfortable in the rough compared to some of its competitors. It is very responsive though, and that encourages and rewards an assertive riding style. Give it the beans it craves and you'll discover a very fun, progressive and highly engaging XC bike that loves to go fast. Indeed, the low weight and snappy pedaling performance means it's really only a front tire change away from lining up at a local club race or entering a multi-day event like the Port to Port. It may not be quite as sharp as a dedicated race bike like the Lux SLX, but for many riders, the increased versatility and capability of the Lux Trail will make it the more practical choice and likely the faster bike overall. If you want to check out the full review of the Canyon Lux Trail, make sure you click the link in the video description below. If you've got any questions for me about this bike, drop those into the comments and I'll do my best to answer them for you. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. Otherwise, that's it from me, guys. I'll see you next time. Tooroo!